Welcome back, y'all, to another episode of Redefining Reality. I'm your host, Brian Hardy, and today I am joined by the good doctor, the oregano doctor, Cass Ingram. Welcome to the show, Cass. Thank you for being here. Hello. Good to, good to see you again, I guess, uh, some time ago. But uh, yeah, how's it going up in Canada? You're, you're surrounded by the bush, I understand, kind of. More or less, more or less. We, uh, we're in a, a little, you know, little sort of community that has a lot of bush around it. Um, I just spent a weekend about an hour north of here, up in the Rosso area, uh, which is just gorgeous and very full of abundant, lush nature. Um, and yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Definitely enjoying it. That's good. That's very good. Yeah, I mean, basically, in, in the you know, in the wilderness, in the nature, uh, you know, everything that God's made is out there. You just have to kind of know what you're looking at. I mean, you walked into the provincial forest up that way, you wouldn't, you wouldn't really know what you could take for a viral pandemic or for Lyme disease or, or for just your heart disease, kidney disease, or uh, arthritic pain, diabetes, you'd have to have the knowledge of what you people that live in Canada. I said, well, why don't you go out there to the, to the bush and get this root or get this leaf or, <laughs> and then, you know, sometimes they'll do it. It's tough, right? And it feels, I think a lot of times it feels overwhelming for folks because they have no, they have no connection to it. They have no prior experience of it. You know, they may, they probably didn't grow up with mentors or aunties and uncles and grandparents who could take them out and show them things, um, which is why, you know, folks like yourself that are preserving and continuing to expand on some of this knowledge, you know, the class, classical herbalism knowledge, but also, you know, I'm sure there's new things being found and discovered and, and new synergies being created, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm big on actually doing innovation in the bush. Uh, even if Madame Grieve or the, the North American native textbook doesn't talk about it or the British herbalist or the American herbalist, uh, I'll invent some value based on the science, based on the botany uh, capacities. I'll just go into the bush and figure something different out. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's why if you watch my channel or listen to the bo a, a podcast yourself or mine, you'll get novel information on herbology that you wouldn't get. So you're going to be confused because you don't have a practical, the books don't give you a practical. I mean, they, a little bit, but we need to get people to have the confidence to know what's in their backyard. That's kind of my project right now. It's in the, what's in the vacant lot, what's in the bush, what's in the forest, what's in the provincial park. And, uh, in an easy way, right? Like you, you saw my channel about you could get strawberry leaf tea and use it as a diuretic. Mm. Who's going to ever think of that? Whether it's your organic strawberries or your wild ones, the wild are better. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nobody's going to pick such thing. Yeah, no, exactly. I, I literally see them everywhere. Um, and, you know, I'm trained to just look for berries. I'm trained to just look for fruit. Yeah, uh, and because it's so scarce in most places because the dryness yeah. and the conditions. Although when you find that little wild strawberry, it's like you know God's gumdrop candy, <laughs> little blast of amazing flavor. Um, but yeah, the leaves are everywhere. So it's like the leaves, even if there's no fruit, even if there's nothing that we that we might uh, understand already to be food or medicine, it's, it's quite still delicious. There. The taste, it's mm. more pleasant than a Lipton tea without the caffeine. Yeah, And then you have also the fact that the root is exceptional for cardiovascular disease. So that would be more of a, a fall issue. Okay. Now, maybe you don't have the same botanical diversity of the Amazon, but in North America, you do have a lot of cold weather, about, say from Missouri on up or Oklahoma. You know, you got these cold weather districts that produce some pretty basic things like blackberry, black raspberry red raspberry, not just the berry, but the leaves during a certain time of the season, the fresh shoots, they're high in vitamins and vitamin C during the early part. And the root has a value that maybe they're not the end all to everything, but there are certain categories that the berry medicines, the berry and the, uh, the plant have that we don't take advantage of. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. They're completely underutilized or non-utilized. Or just it's just it's just not a thought. Right? It's completely out of most people's awareness. Not a thought. And then, of course, if you had dandelions in a sort of, as I showed on the channel, in a clean area where they weren't spread round up, mm -hmm. the, the, the leaf in the shade or in the early spring will open up your gallbladder and liver, which we all could use. Mm -hmm. These people used to do that. Mm -hmm. And then the root in the fall can be roasted but you know the problem is that dandelions are so heavily intoxicated with heavy metals and sprays in the more urban environment. You'd have to you'd have to make make an effort to get some clean stuff. But if you did, uh, the root would be excellent kidney uh, and and kidney stone and also gallstone. They'd come out by say you just chop it up and put on a salad. Uh, or if you wanted the extract, you know we'll talk at the end of the show. I can show you where you can get the wild northern canadian remote source because let's say somebody's in miami i mean where are they going to find a dandelion that's any good yeah so so there's both the harvesters like you and i and the commercial people that say no I just i just want to buy this stuff you know? it's simple yeah yeah but i want to i want to take us back a little bit because i've never heard what it was or what it is that really got you so passionately connected and curious about not just you know natural medicines but particularly wild medicines and having such an emphasis on wild fresh pure from the source stuff i figured it this way I, if god made it and i don't mess with it it's got to be better than the drugs it was just a simple thought process and and if man was cajoling it and manipulating it on a farm, organic or commercial, it couldn't be the same as going in a bush where no human being has ever been and you find some mossy area or something, nobody's ever stepped there and that mm. thing is there. It's growing on its own. And the th second thing that influenced me is that the wild beasts never get sick. So I figured there was something in the trees, the plants, the herbs, the you know the the grassies that was medicinal otherwise why don't we have degenerate disease in a bear unless it eats out of a dump right or in a moose or how do they survive right mm. or, or or deer and one time i saw a deer running at a barbed wire fence bent itself to about 45 or 50 degrees and somehow ducked right through the went right through the fence without just zip through it. That kind of coordination, that mm -hmm. sophistication. One, a friend of mine, I don't know if you heard about this, first of all, in California, there was a guy who saw a bear on the I-5 and he wanted to be a good Samaritan, God bless him. And he tried to get the bear to, to leave the freeway. The bear didn't like the idea. He took him as a threat. He took one swipe at him and decapitated the guy right there on the road. Whoa, was Pretty that strong. recently or was that, is that just like uh, back in the news cycle at some point? Yeah, I mean, then it there was a guy- Just to demonstrate the power uh, of, it's just to oh. demonstrate the power of wild nature. Wait, yeah. that's it. So they're feasting off the wild nature. There was a bear one time, a small bear, like the size of a tomcat. And the guy thought he was cute, so he grabbed him. Well, that's not a good idea either. So the bear started climbing up the tree and his paw got his, Claws got stuck in the guy's overhauls, and he carried the guy up about four, 30 feet. <laughs> he was climbing with one leg, one or, or two legs. Mm. And and uh, I mean, there's something in the wild berries and roots and nuts and seeds and greens and trees that could. I, and I know from personal experience when you start taking it, if you had a disease process or the beginning of symptoms, it'll clean it out. But then, like I just went into the bush and picked two, three gallons of black raspberries mm. in a remote area because the company said, hey, can somebody get this? We're running out to make an extract because to get the elagic acid. Mm. I ate a bunch of those. I, I tell you what, I felt like I could knock down a couple walls. Uh, there's just something. Now, I wouldn't have got the same result if I had eight commercial blueberries or raspberries. No. There's something. Yeah, well, and the freshness factor, 
right? You're getting it fresh. You're getting, it's not sitting in a package or under artificial lights or in a cooler someplace for days or weeks or however long that happens. Um, so there's still that vital force is still alive and flowing through the substance. Uh, That's it. That you can hit it on the schnozola. It's not the elagic acid or the anthocyanin or the, or the phenolic compound or the carbocrol. That's a part of it, but it's the, it's the molecular force that you, know, you it's the sun is interacting. Actually, it was interesting. I saw this black raspberry plant. It sticks its little fork, little thing into the ground. It makes a semicircle so that the plant can, can be in that position to take up the sunlight, the photons. So then you're, when you eat it, you're eating that molecular energy, the sunlight. You're, 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 you're having photonic energy blast into your body. So that's kind of why I got into it. I knew I didn't really, I don't want to have somebody call me in somewhat desperation. They've been to 20 doctors and then they try my advice and they go, they don't, they go nowhere. So, you know, I, I wanted to be able to, to, to facilitate their, you know, their, their process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And move the needle, right? Move the needle yeah, yeah. On, on getting them actually some results. Um, and without, you know, the crazy side effects that are just yeah, commonplace in the not even, Yeah, and it's exactly. And it's not even, you know, like, oh, I want to be this doctor, that doctor. It's exactly that. I want them to get some significant results and be done with them. I can't have everybody calling me every five minutes. Uh, I got to go on. They got to go on. Mm. You know, it's, it's... But then also just for context as well, because, you know, it, it might have appeared very matter of factly to you that, oh, you know, the creator has made nature in its perfection. So clearly, you know, I'm, I'm seeing as a result, animals, the plants, everything is thriving. So there's something there for us, right? Not everyone is able to make that connection. But I wonder, were you raised on the land? Were you raised with this sense of like divine natural order and connection? You know, were you running around as a kid picking berries? Was this in you from the get or was there yes, a point that, where... That, that's right. Uh, there was something about, well, my mother took me into the woods a couple times and that was nice. And she showed me some things that, that, you know, she was an immigrant that you can eat. I was fascinated by that. So I would used to go and sit in the pear tree, the wild pear tree and just grab pears and eat them until my stomach blew up. Uh, and that was when I was like nine, 10. So, and I would pick these wild grapes where I could find them sour. Uh, but my other siblings, none of them were interested in that. And there were five of them. The, the other thing that happened was I kind of went through a spiritual revolution where I started to look at the holy books heavily. And then I could see the thread from the Almighty God where he didn't really recommend industrial pharmaceuticals. <laughs> His dispensation in the Quran was honey. In the Bible was wild oregano and black seed oil. Uh, and in both of those texts, pomegranate. I said, well, if God's talking about this, these must be favorites of his. What is in there? You know, he doesn't say, well, get some elagic acid. And I want you to get the berries. You get the anthocyanins or anti-tumor. You don't really see him saying anything. So you have to figure it out yourself. But what does he mean by all this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that had a that that's where that's what motivated me to. In fact, then I ran into a guy because I was basically a, a a jock and a in the on the on the summer I would destroy buildings and sell the bricks and lumber and salvage the copper and the setting. Mm -hmm. And so he this guy said, well, you know, you're always talking about white flour, white sugar, and you're you know you're always trying to find wild plants and fruit. Why don't you become like a doctor? I said, a doctor? I have C my grades are C minus. So I fought it. But then another fellow, uh, God bless him, by Sayyid Pasha said, well, listen, come on. Get, quit floating around. You got to get, don't, don't be a chiropractor. Get yourself an MD or, you know, whatever. So these two guys, uh, they kept pounding on me. One was a doctor. One was a PhD. And I, I said, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll go to medical school. So I went to pre-med, and man, I tell you, what, I got all C's, but I started to hang around with the A students, and then I started to figure out how to get the A's. It was just a technique, a tactic. 
Mm -hmm. Got into medical school, barely. The osteopath said, listen, you know, you're a motivated guy. Your grades aren't great, but you're coming along. We'll take you. That's kind of how it went. So I thought, well, I can't stand this. They're telling us nothing can be cured and all these drugs they're just, and, I, and the people are dying from the drug therapy and the surgeons are causing side effects and some people are dying. I said, I just, I can't. So I immediately started recommending IV vitamins when I was in my training. And you know what? Uh, I started helping some of the GPs with nutrition and herbal medicine and I got flunked. Mm. They flunked me. <laughs> Powers to be made me repeat three months the whole summer to get my graduation. And like the idea of a violator, uh, of a trendsetter, of a, you know, so, but I got it. I got my degree. Mm. And, um, I immediately started treating with nutrition. But uh, it took me a while to figure out that herbal medicine from the bush was the only thing that worked. That, 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 was, that was another thing. Mm -hmm. See, I got so sick from an IV needle that I had to quit practicing medicine. I started to die. It was the, it was the wild medicine that cured me. So that, that, that was the end for me. That's, I mean, the beginning. And how many years ago was that? 1991, 90, 90, I had to quit the clinic. And I used this, this here, right here. But that, this was not in a bottle. I just got it in a drum, oil of wild oregano. Mm. I used that and something called Oregamax. It's all I had. And it took six months. I got cured and then that was it. I'm, I, I, my, you know, it was like when I was a dead man, it was like lightning struck me. I changed, I quit being so dogmatic and all kind of, and like, I was tuned into people, right? Mm. At that, point. that happened for a reason. Mm -hmm. Their issues, their problems, their challenges. Well, and I love, I love hearing that story and thank you for sharing because it's important that, you know, we recognize everyone has their own path. Everyone has their own life experience. Everyone had, you know, there's many paths up the mountain is what I say. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I similarly, and I won't go into depth with it because I've talked about this in the past, but I similarly, when I was 18 years old, had a ruptured appendix, uh, which was misdiagnosed and mistreated and nearly caused me to go into septic shock. Um, and so that was my sort of awakening moment to, okay, you know, I'm going to die one day and this life isn't forever. And so let's make the most of it and let's figure out why this happened and how I can prevent this from you know, happening again or deal with the side effects. Um, that, so that's I, a serious I, thing, and you, you, you know, 50-50, but you survived it. Mm -hmm. Now, were you given all the vaccines of childhood? Well, I think I, 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 in a sense, I lucked out because I was born in 91, and I sense I was one of the last generations. I still had some you know, schedule. There was definitely a schedule. Um, but I sense I skipped on the really, really insane schedule that came later. Oh, yeah. Um, so you got was, 30 vaccines, 20. I've definitely, yeah. I mean, I've definitely gotten a bunch. You're a big cause of big, big cause of the appendiceal and small intestinal disasters. You have to clean your system out. And that's a particular, uh, particular kind of vaccine that tends to cause that? MMR. MMR. Okay. Yeah. It makes sense. And my sister, same thing. Her appendix, you know, was taken out a few years before mine. It's, it's, it's rampant. It's rampant. I had a good friend of mine take, you know, his, his rupture. To, I would like to know if they were all vaccinated because the vaccines yep. plug up that system and did damage the mucosa and the ability to fight back against infections. But also sometimes with ruptured appendix, there can be tapeworms or other worms that get into the appendix that you can't really diagnose easily. Mm. Oh, there's, but it's an infectious disease, chronic infection, and then it blows up. Totally. Yeah. Totally. And that's what I sensed, you know, having digestive issues like my whole life and not really knowing, um, and that it sort of came to a head. Well, they're from the vaccines and you have to, in most cases, you have to take the oregano oil and juice to clear it out, you know, pretty much. Mm. Yeah. Take it for about 90 days and, and clear out all the pus and poison that, and if you've had an appendix, seal ruptured, then you still have some secondary infection in the body. You have to deal with that. 
Mm -hmm. uh, you totally. can't suck out all that infection with a, you know, a suction device once it blows up inside. No, exactly. And that was, you know, that was the technical term that they told me was that I was a mess. And yeah. uh, they, they had to do actually secondary intention healing because the, the wound was so infected, it wouldn't close on its own. You know, the staples wouldn't hold. Um, but yeah. anyways, it was, it was a long journey, a gruesome journey. Um, but that got you interested in, in natural medicine, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, I feel like that was, you know, in a sense, that was God initiating me into my life's purpose and path. Um, yeah. Which tends to, you know, I see that it happen more and more and more, especially these days. You know, people are waking up left and right. And just, yes. you know, they, it's, it's, they're no longer capable of operating in the same way that they were. Um, yeah. And well, yeah. this is bad news now. I mean, <laughs> if you're not taking care of yourself, some stupid disease, whether it's flu or COVID or something could take down a fairly good person. Uh, and, and whereas the person that's good, it won't even touch them. And if it does, it's so mild, they don't even know what they had. Exactly. Exactly. And that's the place I want people to be able to get to is to transcend the fear. And it's, it's interesting because I was just away at a weekend with some friends. There was about 12 or 15 of us, I think. And one of the couples was going from that weekend. And then a week later, they were going to go and see um, uh, elderly parents. And they hadn't seen them since yeah. this whole thing started. And so yeah. they were just maintaining a bit of distance and not sharing food and not sharing, you know, drinks and things the way, the way the rest of us were comfortable to do. Um, but it really hits me, you know, because knowing what I know about these things, you know, from your work and other people like yourself, I have no fear, right? Yeah. There, there's no fear about any of these infectious things because when you have the solutions, what's there to fear? It's a non-issue, no, right? That's right. Um, that's but, right. But it was just so interesting to see um, and to, to really feel for, for you know, yeah. masses of people that are That's just right. crushed by that fear. That's right. They are. I mean, that, whatever happened to the flu this year? So the, <laughs> we have a different disease that maybe took its place a little bit. We don't hear anybody getting sick from flu. And now you have a bit of a pathogen of sorts. But this is a pretty much a wimp germ. Mm -hmm. uh, if you, not to say that people haven't gotten sick and died and all that, but if you were to, to attack it, if you knew what to attack it with, if you were to go out, if you got sick with this and you were to just go buy a bunch of grapefruits and chew on the rind, you'd start feeling better right away. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you, if, you, <laughs> if you were audacious enough to take some parsley and onion and juice it, you'd have a dry cough or you'd have a little sickness, a little sore throat, you'd start feeling better right away. Like, I mean, immediately, let alone if you did something sophisticated like the oil of wild oregano and you knew about that and you said, all right, I'll just take, I'm starting to get some junk, you know, and I'm going to take the oil of oregano about five drops at a time, five or 10 drops. I'm going to take this spray. It's a rega spray. I'll just, you know, I use it all the time. Mm -hmm. I just spray that on myself and spray that at the back of my throat. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, but you'd have to have that knowledge base, that belief base that you don't have any issue because if you did get sick somehow, you were with some friends and somebody had a fulminant infection, you're a young guy, you just immediately would take action. Yeah, yeah. One last thing, actually, before we pop forward, um, you mentioned about the vaccines and the causing of the appendicitis and really the the clogging of our lymph tissues in a sense, yes. right? You see, you know, you people get their, their tonsils taken out and all these different things. Um, and I wonder if you, particularly around the appendix, um, I had heard that there was like Russian research that the appendix was almost like this, uh, almost like an x-ray scanner for the digestive tract that would energetically scan what was coming through and then send the proper signal. Have you heard anything about that or is that anything? I mean, I think that that's fascinating. You know, you've got to ask what it's doing there and it's right there by the sequel intercha interchange as things go from the small intestine to this large intestine. And so uh, I, I think we need to look at that. I'm sure it's correct, but can't, once you vaccinate, it's, it's disrupted. You can't, it can't do anything much. It's, it's caught up in this nightmare of, of artificial infection from the MMR, the DPT, and so on. So, and then the lymphatic nodules that act as sentinels, whether appendiceal or otherwise, are disturbed. And you get these nodules of plugged up lymph. 
only in the vaccinated. Uh, so then it, it reaches a point of no return. It can't fight anymore, blows up and gets infected and you, you, you get an appendicitis. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah, it serves an important function. Don't want to get your, and that makes sense because if you cut the appendix out, there's like a fourfold increased risk for colon cancer. Mm. So those people without appendixes, appendices have to really be aggressive to protect that environment. Good to know. Yeah. Good to know. Um, you mentioned the oregano juice. I mean, people, uh, many times, most people listening are probably familiar with oregano oil. Right. It's quite popular. They might not have ever come across a good one or a wild one. That's right. But uh, tell us about the juice. What's the difference between those two? Are well, you, the, you got to know about the ethnobotanics. Uh, and the, the village people, when you go overseas, they say, well, you Americans are a curious bunch. You Canadians, whatever. You use the oil of oregano. We don't really use it here unless we have a bro a broke break or sprain or contusion. We use the juice. So he showed it to me. He took a case of pop bottles. He had a distillation machine in his backyard. It was in the mountains, you know, 5,000 feet up. And he was distilling out this wild oregano he collected. And he was bottling it in like Pepsi bottles. Mm. And, and he said, this is the stuff. I said, well, OK, we're new to these things. It's about 1997. What do we do with it? He said, you use it for cancer, heart disease, and diabetes. I said, well, you want to get me arrested and thrown in jail? I go on telling it's good for cancer. Uh, so what it is is the aromatic water. So, so when the oil is distilled into one drum, the water is condensed into another. And the juice of oregano is easy to take. It's a hydrozole. It's well tolerated. It's perfect for pregnancy. It's perfect for... Uh, nursing is perfect for uh, dogs and cats. It's it's a water-based condensation. And it's different than the oil. You, you don't take oil of oregano to make juice. It comes out of a different spigot. Mm. But it is a positive ionotrope. It's anti-tumor. It's an anti-parasitic. And the big thing it, it does is it delivers molecular oxygen to the tissues. I have found that if you have a vaccination injury to the gut if you pound the juice and the oil together and you and usually you use the crude herb that's that's known as oregamex i love that for our formula you can clear it up and this is amazing because vaccinations damage is supposed to be like incurable but if you're not too bad if you're not in the middle of a you know regressive autism you can clear it up in about 90 days I is did. that I, is that what sort of therapeutic dose would someone need to to get that result? Because most people uh, underdose most of these things, right? Yes, uh, it probably would take about ten or twenty drops of the oil twice a day, and an, an ounce of the juice. That's a conservative amount twice a day, uh, about three four of these Oregamax twice a day. But if it was a severe colitis, enteritis, SIBO, if it was an extreme case of of Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis from inoculations, then you'd want maybe 40 drops of the oil three times a day, maybe two ounces of juice twice a day. You do that for a period of time, maybe four Oregamax three times, maybe. And you do that for your 60 to 90 days until you're really feeling brilliant. And you might develop weird things like fever, chills, because you're killing you might develop a little fatigue from the killing response, the Herxheimer reaction. It's possible you could develop fistulas that the body's trying to kick out the, the sepsis. Mm. Yeah. Because you could have candida, you could have fungal, you could have bacterial, viral, all together. Well, and most people are going to have, you know, sort of a symphony of those things, you know, a, a whole mixture, milieu of uh, yeah. various pathogenic things that they've been exposed to. Um, and for, for, yeah. see, the oregano is the cleansing herb, right? That's what the Godhead says that, you know, purge yourself with your hyssop that you'll be purified, whatever that. But that hyssop meant Esau, and Esau is Hebrew for wild oregano. There's no hyssop in the in available. Mm. Just mountain it makes oregano. Makes a lot of sense. And I mean, you think about if anyone's ever had uh, wild oregano as a spice, you know, just like munched on a couple of leaves. Yeah. You can tell it's medicinal, yeah. um, but for the average person to try and find something like that and then eat it in any quantity is quite a task. 
So quite so. a task. That's why the encapsulation of that high quality mountain oregano or the distillation of the oil makes sense. And and of course in Canada, I think since some of your listeners are there, there's now as I started this whole oregano system in, in industry, but there were a number of people who really didn't know what they were doing who said, "Whoa." Dr. Ingram, he's got these big crowds. Let's put oregano oil on the market. And they may not have done the right thing. And so we found some inferior material in the marketplace, in the health stores. So just look for the P73. It's a little bit more dear financially, but this is the kind. I'll just show this. I mean, it's not to be mm -hmm. a commercial of it. But if you see that label, that's the kind that you could do this with. So you needed to take to your dropper full. Let's see, you need to take a a couple drops, that's 80 drops, which is what we give for toenail fungus, for instance, which is what we give for appendicitis. Mm -hmm. My son is living in Canada and I got a call from the ex-wife that he was sick. Well, his appendix blew up, I didn't know about that. And he was septic with a heart rate of 130 or 40 and a breathing rate of 40. So he was, the sepsis was overtaking him because he was so heavily vaccinated anyway, he didn't have any much resistance. Mm. So he was probably getting his appendicitis from these inoculations and poor diet. But in any case, sugar, by the way, is another big factor in appendicitis. I, I, while he was dying, I recommended the oil of wild oregano rubbed all over his body, which they did, and on his feet. I think they did it on his shins. It's a very important area to rub on his back. And it gave him 40 to 80 drops on the hour. You know, I called back in a couple, three hours. His heart rate was almost to normal. And his breathing came way down to normal. So we, the oregano immediately collapsed the sepsis. And he survived what could have been a 50-50 for him. He might have died. He was only 20-something. Mm. But this is how bad appendicitis is if it ruptures in a vaccinated person whether their their immunity can can come up or not is fit is half and half mm. and i wonder for someone listening who might want to uh do some of that own you know topical applications are you putting it in a carrier oil because they know a regular oh, burn are you just putting it just burn, straight on i want this burning stuff now not pure oregano oil mm. okay and i will See, if a person's sick, the best thing you can do is rub the shins as far as topical. Is that just because of the way it gets it. into circulation? Well, the shins don't have any any tissue, so you go right to the lymphatics. They attach to the shin bone. Mm. So this is God's gift to the human race on how to get the, the medicine into your loved ones if they can't, if they're NPO or whatever, and they're too tired or sick. Get it? So, and then for children, this would be ideal. So you rub it until you feel the friction. Boom, 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 boom. Until you, it is, it's hot Heat, with exposure. Yeah. Now, we have good data that uh, oregano oil, when rubbed topically, will kill germs. And sometimes is a sufficient. I had, uh, here's a case. You'll have fun. I had a person with Bell's palsy, right? And she didn't like the taste of the oregano oil. <laughs> So all she did was rub it on her shins in the bottom of her feet. The, the viral Bell's palsy disappeared. Mm -hmm. It was like two, three days later. Wow. But the point is, you have children, you have sick people, and you can't get to them otherwise. You rub them. And by that, you get the medicine into the lymphatics. Beautiful. There's nothing more dramatic than the oregano oil for stimulating lymph. No herb, no, no, nothing. Period. Wow. Not lavender, not nothing. That's amazing because I also do in my own practice. I do, you know, deep tissue body work and just physical releasing of things. And I've, I mean, I use magnesium. I'll use uh, topical hemp or cannabis extracts for pain. But I've never thought to infuse these kinds of things, particularly applied to the shins, to support immunity or to support something else. You know, oh, it's, it's an incredible. It's an incredible experience to do a good shin rub on a, wow. on a, especially on a sick person, especially an infected sick person. And then you have other chronic illnesses like Lyme disease, uh, drug resistant germs, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, AIDS, HIV. You have these, these disabilities 
And these are the people who should be doing the scrub twice a day, especially active infections. Okay. Tuberculosis is another. Yeah. Good to know. And I, 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 I prefer the super strength formulation for that. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the more potent than, you know, the fewer drops you're going to need. And for anyone listening, you know, you, you got to understand that like most, you know, uh, things in life, you get what you pay for. So don't cheap out on your supplements and the things that are actually going to support your immunity and your family's yeah. immunity. Those are the things that you want to invest in because this is, you know, our health is the thing. If we're not investing in our health, then I think we've missed the mark. Yeah, I had a guy who tried to cheap out for his dog. So he bought some oregano oil from a, a $400 million company uh, on the internet. Mm. He had the P7. This is the P73. This is the ultra. That's the high carbon. Oil. Mm -hmm. So whatever you use. Uh, but he was using this P73 for himself and his family. He was not cheaping out, but he cheaped out for the dog. The dog died. The dog flipped on its back and its feet went up and it died stiff like that. Which, after he gave him the herb. We don't know what he, what what was in that bottle. Yeah. It said oregano oil right there. Oil of oregano. But yeah. I don't want to name the company. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No, and it's just it's you know quality, 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 quality is it, very important, right? Yeah. Um, and this is something that I've always really appreciated about anything that you've shared that is a product is that they are wild, handpicked, har you know wild harvested, fresh harvested and in formulas that you don't see other places. And that's what I want that's to it. give you some time to talk to. Um, and you mentioned some um, clinical research that you guys have been doing right. around this whole pandemic. And right. oh, the pandemic, the pandemic. Uh, okay, so I don't know what kind of pandemic Canada is having. I think in Manitoba, they told me, a friend told me he, there were four confirmed cases, but now the hotter rights have another 20. I mean, it, a, a pandemic. <laughs> is Lyme disease, right? Where every other day I got a phone call, I got Lyme, I got a tick bite. I, you know, it, it's something that affects 1%, 2%, 5%, 10% of the population. Mm -hmm. But even so, we decided to test it. This was in 2003, it had nothing to do with this. Mm -hmm. We tested the human coronavirus because I had dealt with some people with SARS mm -hmm. in an in vitro study. And it's published in antiviral research. Uh, and also influenza A, the oregano oil, as well as something with oregano, cumin, cinnamon, and sage, which is known as Oregaresp, R-E-S-P, mm -hmm. obliterated the virus, 99.99% kill in just five to 10 minutes. It's, it was done. One dose. Uh, it Basically what oregano oil does with the carbocrol is it in the other spices too, the phenolic compounds, you've got the bacterial growth in the in vitro. You've got it going, 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 going. You've got 5 million per centimeter of blood. You add the oregano oil. <laughs> they can't stand it. It collapses the germs. They go to nothing. Uh, and so imagine if somebody's sick and they start pounding the oregano oil, rub it on their shins, take it in the juice, take it under the tongue, uh, take some oregaresp if you want some juice of oregano, they're going to get better. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, maybe you have some kind of a disease. You, you've got a cancer, you've got a heart disease. We've got to deal with that too, but at least you won't drop dead from something out of a pig farm in China, right? And, yeah. and so, and then, so that, that research was, was belittled by the powerful ones that didn't want, didn't want the common people to realize that oregano oil would be that valuable. So they made fun of it and they diminished the internet presence of that data. Mm -hmm. So I decided, well, you know, if you're going to be that way, I'll do some human trials because I was not popularizing. It just got popular. People found it on the internet. Mm -hmm. I thought, well, I'll, I'll, I'll popularize it. I, I'll take 20 humans and 50 nurses. So I took the 20 humans with COVID-19 and, and presumptive diagnosis. And then the 50 nurses who were on the front lines. So we had one person in the 20 group that coded. They got this material into her. She'll tell you this. They got the spray, whatever. Could you make up your own? I don't care. And she took it because she survived the code and they kept spraying it to the back of the throat. And she was, I think, taking the oregano juice and she survived and went home. 
She was supposed to be dead. Uh, we had another person who was on a respirator and they just took the oregano oil and rubbed it on his feet and shins. He, he popped up two days later, they extubated him and he watched the Super Bowl with his father. So this was an early case of this. Mm. These 20 people all survived. No, none of them got double pneumonia, or if they did it, they recovered. And these were COVID positive or presumptive cases. What we found was the oregano spray, the, the juice, the capsules, the oil, all were pro protective. The 50 nurses who did not get sick, who were still working the front lines, also used, I don't have it here, a sinus oregano type saline spray. They injected it up the nose. Yep. Other than, that's mainly what they did. But here's the bottom line. What we found, we don't want to get, you know, this is not a commercial. Forget that. I just wanted to show you what we did. What we found was that the people who got sick frequently were eating pork flesh. This was 100% of the COVID-19 cases. 80% had taken one to three flu shots in the last three years. So they're capacity to respond to what is really a fairly minor virus was non-existent. This research determined those comorbidities, but we asked about it because we knew they would be there. And we have another two studies on coming. So this data is novel that you're exposing. You'll never see anybody say that industrial farms had everything to do with this outbreak and that we could have another disastrous one in the fall if we don't deal with the industrial farm connection. Mm. You're hearing about H1N1. You'll never hear anybody say that vaccines are correlated with uh, comorbidity, but they are. And the worst of it is it's a man-made disaster, most likely from vaccines. You know, Fauci and his group should be held culpable. Don't make it into a hero. They spent $3.7 million of taxpayer money over to the Wuhan Institute of Virology and tasked them to go into caves 2,000 miles away to harvest bat coronavirus. How do you think it got out of the box? They were growing the bat coronavirus in the lab. Now, how can you have a human pandemic without that being connected? Well, don't tell me that the Chinese dropped it on themselves to, or that the U.S. dropped it. I don't, you know. That doesn't make sense. Why would you destroy your own country to destroy the Chinese? And why would the Chinese destroy the Americans to destroy themselves? But come on. This is greed and, and, and bad boys misbehaving. What it is. Yeah, well, and it feels like in some larger sense, it is the um, almost a collapsing of an empire, right? There's been so much control and corruption and greed and uh, you know, uh, degeneration of the natural way and of God's way and of natural vitality. And, you know, on so many levels, you know, the family unit, the spiritual health of a community, it's all been so attacked. And I think this is just, you know, one more physical representation of this sort of is this chaos of this, you know, spiritual battle going on of these forces that have been playing themselves out for generations and generations um, and it's just being more amplified these days. And, and because, like you said, with the vaccinations and the immense levels of stress and poor nutrition, people are susceptible. And so it's, uh, it's got that sort of perfect storm, a perfect storm of, uh, of ingredients to create something yeah. that uh, yeah. is working could, the way it is. You couldn't have analyzed it more thoroughly. So but it's a spiritual war now where the person who is advanced is saying, well, what can I do to build up my health and the health of my family? They might go to a health food store. They might be pounding down a little bit of oil of oregano. They believe in this. And so they're taking a little bit of action and none of them are being uh, hospitalized. None of them are dying. None of them are cordwood to go into the morgue. But the person who may not know or maybe doesn't want to know who's an alcoholic, who's obese, who's eating the sugar, eating the pork flesh, knowing or not knowing, whatever, no judgment, who's vaccinating with the flu shot, nurses uh, and also practitioners, as well as the nursing home residents and the nursing home client or workers, 
who accepted that system, who've accepted the refined sugar as part of their life, the donuts and the ice cream and the pop and the, the, the cookies, whatever. And they're just, then they get the sickness. Yeah. So if you were to analyze, and a study I could do is analyze the million people who take oregano oil, you'll find that none of them died. That's a testimony. Yeah. It's, You'll also find that some people that were dying were given the oregano oil and it stopped them from dying. Now, I don't know if maybe some people are upset because that's happening. I don't know. Maybe they have a different agenda. <laughs> yeah, very likely. Very likely. Um, and, and for people that want to dig deeper into this, I mean, you've written, I think, more than a dozen books, maybe close to two dozen at this point, but you've got a very thorough uh, sort of, you know, coronavirus breakdown and a lot of this research that you've, uh, you know, you've put, put in there recently right. is there for people to dig into. So if you want to dig into these things, if you're the type of person who needs to see, you know, uh, clinical data of some sort for you to believe or, or, you know, put your faith into something, um, then it's there. And I would encourage you to go and find that resource or find those resources and dig in and not even just to get so caught up with what's currently going on, because I mean, it's, it's July, 2020, as we film this. So people listening will have that context, but you know, you've written about so many things that are timeless. Yeah. You know, there's a timeless medicines that were effective, are effective, will continue to be effective. And from what I can tell are going to become even more essential for those right. of us that are opting out and realigning with a more naturally integrated I, way. I think that's exactly it, that we're aligning with God and his great creation. You know, I, I would call oregano oil omnipotent oregano oil, the wild kind in the mountains. Uh, it, uh, nothing can resist it. The USDA knows it works. The FDA has done a pretty thorough study and said that it's so good it should be turned into a pharmaceutical. We tried to prove it wrong, but it worked extremely effectively we're able to take mm. listen to this tuna fish in the refrigerator for 90 days after putting this p73 oregano oil on fda study so <laughs> the 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 powers to be you know i was told by one senator we know all about the oregano i mean whatever that means then what are you doing you know letting your country go to the pot right? mm. uh so so social distancing we have no data on mm. the mask. We have pretty much zero data on. We have, there's a tremendous amount of information that boosting your immunological function and uh, taking care of yourself and staying off the sugar and not getting multiple flu shots and particularly taking the oil of wild oregano using the spray, these mm -hmm. types of things. Um, you can't get sick. Yeah. yeah. And it really is that simple. It really is that simple and that clear. Well, you're not sick. I'm not sick. And I've been in front of people for nine, for six months. And I did a seminar to 40 people at a health food store. I'm constantly with people, uh, not even a sniffle. Yeah. I mean, I've got the coronavirus in me. We all do, whatever the thing is. Uh, or it came by and went away. Mm. I never forget the guy I saw on a motorcycle. He was going about 45 miles an hour. He had a USA is great mask on, but no helmet. Uh, <laughs> it'd be pretty tough for the virus to catch up with him. But if he hit a bump, he could kill himself. Yeah. So that's, you know, there's no common sense to this. No, no. And there's no common sense to a lot of, you know, these antiquated uh, tyrannical systems, which is why I'm glad to see them, you know, collapsing and falling and uh, being transformed, being superseded by what is more natural and what is more uh, honoring to the human and to the planet and to life. Um, and so, I mean, I, I'm really celebrating that this is speeding up and it's, it's, it's getting people more serious about these things um, and helping to- Myself, it's a good time to be alive for that reason. Yeah, you know, it's, it's exciting. It's like yeah. the potential of I mean, what comes next. To, to take up your point, and it's a valid one, Rockefeller, not to get in too deep the politics, and his group erased natural medicine, erased homeopathy, compromised the osteopaths, just tried to destroy chiropractic because he didn't want the competition for the pharmaceutical cartel. 
And so on, for the last 110 years, we have had no natural medicine of any kind in any hospital or any institution. So now this COVID thing comes and everybody's caught unawares, off guard, because all you would have had to do was say, all right, we've got 10 or 20 people coming into the ER and they have double pneumonia. All right, get the machine out and juice the garlic. We've got a lot of garlic in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. Or get the onions. Make Chop a bunch of onions up and throw them all over the floor and in the room and make them drink the stuff. <laughs> that would have stopped the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, let alone if they wanted to go a little stronger and get some oil of oregano, which is easy, and have everybody take a few drops and get the spray. You can dilute it 100 to 1. It's still active. Dilute it down if you've got a budget. And, you know, mists. And one time I had a guy... He had botulism. They didn't know it. They cut him open and, you know, botulism, clostridium, and he blew up. He died, but his intestines splattered the surgical suite. So they couldn't get the, the bacterial count off. So what they did was they took these sprays, diluted them down, and cleaned, and they sterilized the surgical suite. And we're able, this was in Sweden. We were able to open it again. Yeah. You know, so... We couldn't do that here. The hospital would be afraid it might lose profits if the, it popularized something natural. <sighs> yes. Uh, yeah. Um, one quick thing as we, we wrap up here and before we direct people to how they can follow up with you and continue to learn more and continue to empower themselves with these things, what's uh, what's something on your radar that you want to get out there for that you're, you know, it's, it's mid to later summer approaching what's something yeah. that, that really excites you for getting out well, there i am working on another little pocket book you know i've written the health benefits of wild oregano uh and uh, also the this is going to be the the health benefits of thyroid metabolism and the health benefits of adrenal metabolism so i'll have those done and that will refer to my book uh and and also ebodytype.com will refer back to that testing site Hmm. But then also I've got this book. I don't know what I'm, I just told somebody last night. What I'm, I'm editing four books that I'm out of. And then I'm writing four books at the same time. I said, why am I not burning out? It must be the ashwagandha uh, and the royal jelly. But is the, is, the, is the natural cures for autism. I finished it. So what's on my radar is vaccination to alert people not to get inoculated with experimental septic pus that's being injected in your arm or wherever. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's, I guess, my new project. Okay. And in terms of uh, fresh berries or nuts with, or medicines that you want to your get immune system is not capable. You end up with a colitis, a Crohn's disease. And, yeah, I mean, that's about it. Like, and, and they can go to kazingram.com and study that. It's non-commercial pretty much. The books are there, kazingram.com. Uh, have a look at that. And yeah, go to your health food store. And, and if you need to, uh, arm yourself up with just some natural medicines that you can use to uh, not get sick if you're going to travel or fly or something. You just yeah. get that good quality oil of oregano, get the spray. That's basically all you Keep need. Keep it simple. That's Keep it simple. When I, I, I've traveled with, uh, and it was, our mutual friend Rory Mullen, who uh, who put me onto it, the Rega Resp. Yeah. And uh, I just travel with a, a bottle of those, and I, I hand them out to friends. Yeah, cool. I'm like, anyone want to? Anyone want a little, you know, herbal yeah. pick me up, herbal cleanser? And uh, it's it's quite delicious, actually. It's an enjoyable experience, and it is really effective. So what's more, you know, what more is there? It's, it is. It's perfect. It's already perfect. That's right. That's right. If you, in fact, last to close. When you go on a flight, really you should take two of those before, two during, and two after, and thereafter two, three times a day while you're traveling of that particular thing. That's the cinnamon, clove, sage, oregano. Yeah. Preventative that's, maintenance. That's, 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 I mean, we kept it simple. We told you what to do in the diet. We told you to increase your vitamin C, increase your vitamin A, get it through the diet, and to take the, the top uh, supercharged uh, wild based supplements that's it that's it folks yeah. well um i've been taking notes i will link to links i'll link to cass's work uh some of the products that we've talked about all that will be at the show notes which will be brianhardy.ca forward slash dr oregano that's d r 
O-R-E-G-A-N-O. And uh, yeah, like I said, he's written lots of fantastic books. The products are phenomenal. The only ones that I'm coming across that are of the same quality and like all wild, 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 pure source, natural medicines. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. For and I think they can go to www.oregano.com if they want to, to study that too. Oregano, like alcohol, oregano.com. Okay. Well, thanks everyone. Well, for great to in. talk to you, my friend. Stay well, and we'll keep in touch with the next wild bush experience. Yes, please do. And if you're ever coming up through our neck of the woods, up through Georgian Bay area, uh, north of Toronto, then uh, it'd be great to get out in the woods together and pick some berries and find some medicines or something like that. I'm always game. Always yeah. game for some bush time. Right. Okay. You take care. Bye-bye. All the best. Every man must leave the garden. Every woman must leave. And every man will be forsaken. And every woman must bleed. But everything will be forgiven when you get back home. Everything that once was broken is now completely whole. Completely whole. Completely whole. Completely whole. Completely whole. Yeah, completely whole. Completely whole. So come back home So come back home So come back home Come back home Now that I learned the lesson I cultivate the message capturing the essence of the present moment imperfection Well, love is so alive Jaga my every stride living in the garden with the children of the most high I will climb the mountain and I will sing the song I will find the silence and I will sing along but love will always guide us right back to where we are we were never God so come back home so come back home Come back home.